name is Aaron Young. I'm the CEO and Managing Editor of Ticker News. Can you tell me a little bit about your broadcast journey? Well, I've always wanted to be involved in television news um, ever since I was, I think, seven years old was when it first <laughs> happened. Um, building TV studios out of crepe paper and cardboard in my bedroom, uh, convincing all my friends to watch the news at a time when no one wanted to. Uh, I was always fascinated by American news from here in Australia. I grew up in a kind of an isolated area by the surf ocean beach um, and TV news was as far away as you could possibly imagine from uh, how I grew up, but just knew that that's what I wanted to do, moved to the city uh, when I was about 18 and uh, got into media through newspapers, uh, which obviously taught about sources and things, and then got into radio by starting my own business um, to compete against the big guys that were uh, selling their news services. That got me in with the big guys and got my first job in commercial uh, radio. A few years, moved to London, then moved to Moscow, uh, when Russia Today RT was setting up back in 2005, a whole other life and world it feels like these days, uh, and then moved back to Australia, Sky News, uh, 2006, and then started Ticker back in 2019. Yeah, what inspired you to create the network? Good question. Um, I think that their technology made it possible, right? So yeah. For a very long time, if you wanted to run a network, you needed to have a billion dollars at least. You know, right. Uh, be able to afford, let's imagine starting one, right? Not many have started. I think Rupert Murdoch was the last one in the US to actually start a, a network. Uh, if you think of Fox by buying a bunch of metro stations um, or you think of CNN in 1981, obviously uh, with Ted Turner, it just felt like it was time to start a media company which was starting at zero where we are today. So I had been watching legacy issues, I've been watching the collapse of journalism, um, I've been watching uh, uh, huge management teams and, and big corporate offices and wondering how can this all be sustained? So it was a kind of put up or shut up moment. Um, I'm very passionate about news and very passionate about technology and it just seemed like the right time. Well, before we started, you said you were on the air and there was a lot going on. Uh, do you sleep at all? <laughs> I didn't last night um, because uh, history will say whether or not that was a momentous night on, on Wall Street, uh, Monday uh, the 5th. Uh, it's the 6th here in Australia on a Tuesday. And quite, op uh, quite often when there's a massive story happening around the world, it requires me to be awake and watching it. And it's not just a requirement. I think um, it's excitement, right? There's this yeah. what's going to happen, the exhilaration of, of being involved in a story, the old cliche of the, the front seat, the front row to history. So uh, I think that, um, you know, plenty of time to sleep, right? You just yeah. don't do it when there's big news happening. What is it like working with like-minded people that have the same passion that you have. Yeah, well, that's a, a great point. Um, to work at a startup media company, having gone through what we've gone through over the past five years in terms of COVID and the media right. industry and the tech industry and funding and everything turning upside down, really is a truth teller of people who their heart really is in it or their heart really is not in it. And I think that that has been a, a, a huge lesson. Um, there's never been a moment for me where I've thought about giving up despite all of the challenges of starting a media company and then COVID hits in 2020 uh, and the uncertainty and, and we've grown, you know, we've grown, we've contracted, we've grown again, we just follow. And to have staff that feel the same, that understand, it's all about communication both ways. Uh, for me to listen to their concerns for uh, them to, to see where I'm kind of thinking things are going to go. Uh, when you start a media company these days without all the legacy issues, it doesn't necessarily make it easier um, because you have to communicate to people what you're doing in an industry that doesn't exist, right? We're in the fast, free ad supported TV. We're content creators as well. We don't just aggregate, we do everything. Um, so when you're doing something for the first time, you have to have people who are willing to believe in you and it becomes like a family as a result. 
And you're all you're on camera, and you're also running the industry your uh, company what are some of the challenges you face because those are two different uh, animals it is so true and uh, it's an internal debate that obviously when I started ticker um, I had somewhat of a profile and so it made sense that yeah. I was the most senior anchor that a startup could afford so you go on it <laughs> um, I w- kept wanting to come off camera to focus on just the business side of things every time I did though things would kind of slide away from what my expectations of content and quality were. I also think that um, when you manage as opposed to do, you also lose the ability to know what is the lengths that your team can go to. What's too much to ask or what isn't enough? Uh, How's productivity looking? Um, We've implemented this new technology. Does it work? Am I expecting too much? Are there problems? So I was saying yesterday to someone, a senior member of the team, I'm kind of news director, chief content officer, chief technology officer, uh, chief revenue officer, uh, chief anchor. But I think that if you look at Jeff Zucker, who ran uh, CNN during his time, he was always in the control room. He was choosing what straps go to wear. And when he left the company, even though, you know, it was under a bit of a cloud, uh, people were sad to see him go from a journalism side because he was a CEO who really got what the product was. And I think that if you're going to do something, do it well. And I think that if you're going to throw yourself into things, you need a team that believes in you and that you don't have, uh, it, it flattens the management style, I suppose. And I always get to start the day producing content working with our US team, creating um, the expectation for the Australian team. Yeah, I've I've been in broadcasting a long time and I always like to get my my, uh, hands dirty and uh, do the product as long and thinking of the big picture as well. Uh, speaking of big picture, uh, I when I was doing my research, I saw that you're going to be in the U.S. You have a show, and then uh, the channel is going to be a fast channel uh, as well. Uh, how is that? How does that feel for you to make, you know, something that was your idea now being global? Yes, thank you. Um, we've been in the U.S. for some time. Uh, we love to announce platforms and treat every single platform as if it's a Hollywood premiere, right? It's a big (laughs) ordeal for us. We're in talks with a bunch of other US big streaming platforms too, as you can imagine. Um, We have just, uh, I think it was like a two year conversation that we, with Comcast and Zumo and Xfinity that, that reached a conclusion when you work with these big companies, everything takes a lot longer than what it usually takes smaller company right but um, they've been fantastic to work with we're working with many others Veronica Dudo is our US anchor and bureau chief she's based in New York she's been with us now I think for about three years and uh, terrific to work with we co-host a show every day called Hot Shots where we talk about kind of the big issues um, and she hosts a program called In America Today Every Day um, of the week which is obviously the top US story as well so the US market is where it's at right so I'm sitting here in Melbourne I'm always flying to New York I'm there a couple of times a year uh, as well as Europe as well Um, fast is huge in the US you have to be there it's not just have to we want to be there I love US news I love US politics it's such an interesting place Um, and, uh, and and I think that the audience also really is tuned in as well. So we cover the US from a slightly different perspective than what you might get from CNN or Fox or MSNBC. There is no point starting something just to replicate what already exists. We like to talk about it from a bit of a, what does the world think of what's happening here at the moment? Um, uh, without the kind of looking down the nose mentality, we, we love to talk about it because so many of our viewers travel to the US, work with the US, have teams in the US, and so we're talking with them about what's happening. How important do you think uh, empathy is for storytelling? That is such a a great question. Um, I have used to celebrate having a unique ability of being completely disconnected to the news that I would cover. Um, You would still cover it with, with passion, but 
there was always a wall that you, I guess, have to put up, right? So right. Yeah. from being at the tsunami in Thailand, um, the Boxing Day tsunami, and being on a beach with 10,000 dead bodies that had washed ashore, uh, to covering the London bombings, being one of the first journalists on the scene in 2005, um, and far too many court cases involving parents who have murdered their children for my liking. Yeah. It's been very, very, very difficult. Um, the Christchurch massacre where that Australian yeah. gunman went and murdered 50 Muslims at a mosque uh, really, really impacted me. Um, and covering royal commissions into church sexual abuse, for example, really, really impacted me. And I think as well, Michael, as you get older, I'm now 42. Um, I mean, I still say I'm in my late 20s. But uh, <laughs> as you get older, um, it really does cut through. I think you become a lot more aware, aware of the value of life and, and the value of the people you're talking to. I think as journalists, sometimes that disconnection and the story is a story and tomorrow there'll be a new one does us a bit of a disservice. Maybe it's a coping mechanism. It's one that I've pushed through um, and gotten to the other side of. I think it's made me a better journalist. I think that um, journalists who are parents or have loved ones um, and have gone through trauma themselves probably become um, a bit more understanding and, and real, I suppose. And that's the importance of seniority and also of experience. And I think that the saddest thing we're seeing is that so many journalists with experience are now being shown the door because of, of pay. Um, and yeah. if there's one thing that I hope that Ticker can achieve, it's that it can be home uh, for journalists uh, well into their elder years and to create a business model that is sustainable. Yeah, where do you want to see Ticker in the next few years? Well, uh, I definitely, I mean, there's what I can control and what I can't control, right? I often refer to running a startup in the media space as a little bit like learning to ice skate during an earthquake when there's a tsunami <laughs> and then someone says there's an asteroid on the way. You know, there's so much you can't control yeah. that the whole industry, I mean, it's it's you can't exaggerate how much change there is, right? You're seeing startups with great hope collapse. Uh, Newsnet, I was just reading before I came on, yeah. started years ago, um, has gone under. Uh, great aspirations, but it's gone under. CNN trying to find a business model. Um, the major networks losing audience uh, and just kind of getting used to it. That constant 10% drop off each year. We just, want to be positioned for whatever comes our way. And that requires us to kind of be in a bit of a cat kind of um, uh, position all the time to make sure that whatever is thrown at us or whatever ledge we're thrown off, we land on our feet um, and to make sure that we are really adaptable. And so I think that what I would love to see is for fast revenue to really soar. Um, it is, and particularly in America, but it's still for certain channels that already existed. So, you know, brand awareness for us is massively important. It's why I love doing interviews like this one. It's a great opportunity to, to speak about it and to show who we really are. Um, I think that, you know, I look at Cheddar and the experience they had. I look at yeah. Yahoo Finance and Bloomberg Originals and Quick Take, um, whatever they're called now. I think it's still Quick Take. Uh, but they have... Um, kind of led the path, but spent a lot of money. And when you invest a lot of money, it can become really challenging when you're looking at the money coming yeah. in through CPMs and the advertising industry is declining everywhere. So fast on our feet, quick to react, try new things, but don't go so far that you will sink the boat if it doesn't work out. That's pretty much my motto. That that's well said. That's very important because that's the big thing with media. You got to be ready for everything and try to do it not super expensive. So <laughs> you know, you know what you're doing. It's on our side, right? And that's what I mean about yeah. being the CTO is probably the most important role I have. I think about mm -hmm. how we used to have a team here two or three years ago that was kind of four person, four people on a team. And that was three people behind the scenes who couldn't be seen. Now, I would argue, and this is me speaking as an on-camera person now, that 
what the audience doesn't see when it comes to television probably doesn't matter. It's all about focusing on what's on camera. That's your point of difference. Whether it be your set, whether it be your graphics, whether it be your promos, whether it be your presenters or your content, you have to spend as much of the pie, the available revenue on that. So from a technology perspective, we've been able to get it so that our presenters can actually mix the shows while they're on air live. That's what I mean about me doing it. Hitting spacebar with my left hand as I move through the rundown while live, while right hand running the auto cue and doing it myself and, and implementing the technology and then uh, operating it so that if the staff say this is too much, I can say, well, I don't know about that. Or I can say, let's go back to the person who made this tech and tell them this needs to be a bit simpler. So um, thankfully, technology is on our side. And it, you know we're looking at an era where auto cues are going to be operating from voice activation these days, instead of having someone sitting in a corner or a presenter having to do it themselves. So we, we really are entering a, a fantastic phase. Um, for example, with us, when we're presenting our show, our microphones are connected to the cameras in that if I'm interviewing someone in the studio or remotely like you and I are right now, it will cut between cameras using AI to oh, essentially wow. detect. So we don't need a vision mixer sitting there watching. I mean, how many directors have we worked with over the years who um, miss a shot and I say, why didn't you cut to the camera? And they say, oh, I tuned out. So the great thing about AI, it doesn't tune out. <laughs> no, it does not. What do you do to help your own mental health? I have a black Labrador named Tucker, uh, <laughs> and he was the best thing that I've ever done, um, both in terms of helping with some of that PTSD that developed from all those years of being on the yeah. road, covering really traumatic things that I didn't know were building up, and then one day really hit me. Um, but having a smiley dog um, that wants you home, that doesn't want you to leave, he comes into the office every now and then uh, because I think he, he can share what he the magic powder that a black Labrador can bring to everybody. But um, having that forced, um, when I started Ticker, I was working 20 hours a day, as you can imagine. Uh, yeah. It was never ending, weekends, everything. But having a dog that doesn't really care too much about uh, what you're up to during the day but needs you home is a great leveler. And so that's great. Also just traveling um, and going to interesting places. I was just in Tokyo for a couple of weeks and that's fantastic because it gets the, keeps the mind going. I think when you do something like this, the idea of lying on a beach um, and switching off, I think I'd probably stay a coup on the island after three days, I'd be so bored. Um, so you kind of have to keep yourself occupied. Uh, and I always ask myself, do I have ADHD? But it isn't. It's that you have to be at a heightened level to do something like this, meaning that when you switch off, you need to activate the brain elsewhere. And having a dog does that. Um, getting out to the country every weekend does that, going to the beach um, for a hike, and more importantly, traveling overseas and getting out of your surroundings. What leadership skills do you need to be running a ticker? I would say the number one thing is being authentic. I think that the number one thing is that people need to believe in you. And so you need to communicate. You need to um, not hide your bad days. You need to be honest about it and to say, like I did this morning, guys, uh, I didn't have any sleep. In fact, I, I messaged people in our group chat at 4 a.m. to say, um, and, and I knew that no one would be awake to say, I didn't want to wake anyone up, but um, guys, you know, I've very much been awake covering this and I'll be in. I've got an interview with Michael and I've got a show to do, but that's all you're going to expect from me for a little, for a little while. Um, I think that authenticity and knowing that I roll up my sleeves and whether it's the cabling that needs to be done or dealing with one of our tech providers. I've got two big meetings this afternoon about some tech challenges with the Europe team and an American team and one in India as well. Um, so it's trust. They need to trust that you've got their back, that they're able to have a, uh, a lifelong career with you as opposed to that fear that a lot of people I would assume have when they work in startups or media companies these days of how much longer will this go for? Um, how safe am I? And trying to bring safety and a culture of, you don't want necessarily a culture of entitlement, 
and you do want a culture of entrepreneurism, um, I think one of the biggest leadership techniques I've learned as well is not to expect the same of others that I do of myself. Um, otherwise, they'd be doing this, right? And I think that that has been really crucial to understanding things too. So I, when I was doing my research, I saw all the different uh, types of shows you have, and it's quite a variety and all that. Could you tell me a little bit about uh, your shows? The best way to put it is to imagine that we make four hours of content and the front half hour of every hour is ticker news and the back half hour falls into four categories, money, technology, leadership, and documentaries. And that's pretty much how we operate. Now we have a whole bunch of different shows that fit into each of those categories, as well as the front news half hour we have in America today, ticker news, ticker now, hot shots, and we keep recording them and going live throughout the day with them as well. But in the end, it's news, and we care about money, tech, leadership, and documentaries. And those documentaries are generally about leadership, money, and tech, right? So our brand is um, try and imagine a someone who's maybe aged between 30 and 50, who works in technology, travels a lot around the world, uh, works in finance, is making key life decisions um, about a mortgage, a partner, changing their job, choosing a career, uh, and they're looking for one source of truth that covers all of that in a way that they find interesting. Either we do linear um, broadcasting, obviously, through the Fast Channel 24-7. We have website, we have apps on demand, and then, of course, social media. Speaking of that, how can people reach out and learn more? The best place to go is always tickernews.co. Uh, that is our website that has everything. Uh, the app, if you search for the Ticker app on either the Google Play Store or on the Apple Store uh, for, say, Apple TV, for example, um, head to your favorite streaming platform, and if they don't have them, write to them and tell them, get Ticker on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the website is always the, the, the first place that we kind of deal with. Um, we are a television-first company, Michael. It's kind of funny to say that because... I read and see so many interviews with leaders of, of established media companies and people in positions of power saying, you know, television is dead, it's all about TikTok or it's all about YouTube right. or, and things like that. And while they're really important, they're not your platform. I believe that what sets us apart as a television service is that it's a really high barrier to entry anyone can create a TikTok. If you're a news organization with multi, multi million or billion dollar costs competing in the same space um, as a teenager uh, in their bedroom, that's probably going to become quite a challenge, right? So yeah. <laughs> uh, we're television first and of course the platforms that we own. 